5. Mamula Island Mamula Island was used as an Austro-Hungarian military fort after its construction in 1853. But the isolated concentration camp it turned into during World War II is what the island is remembered for. Benito Mussolini's forces imprisoned thousands on Mamula against their will from May 30, 1942 until the end of the war. The prison was renowned for being a token space for brutality and torture. At least 130 deaths were connected to the area, with the majority of them due to famine. Mamula and the other structures in the concentration camp were completely abandoned when it was closed. Since then, the island has not been reoccupied. There haven't been any attempts to rebuild the land or buildings, including hundreds of cells that were once used to keep prisoners until now, despite the island's excellent location and easy access. There is a plan, though, to bring the decaying buildings back to life. Montenegro's officials want to strip the island of its past and make it something brand new. Their vision is to make a fancy beach resort decked out with a VIP nightclub, infinity pool, and spa. It would cost $16 million, and they emphasize that there will be many employment opportunities in the area if the project continues. They would profit, in the meantime, from the revenue tourists generate. 4. Snake Island At first sight, Isla de Quimara Grande, which is about 90 miles off the coast of Sao Paulo, seems like a breathtaking location. Almost everyone in Brazil knows of the island, but most wouldn't consider visiting, since it's home to nearly 4,000 golden lancehead vipers, one of the world's deadliest snakes. Rumor has it that the venom from these vipers can melt the flesh off a human and kill them in less than an hour. There are many local legends surrounding curious folk who wandered onto the island. Locals like to tell the story of a fisherman who was foolish enough to search for bananas. Instead, he died as a result of snake bites. He was found a few days later in a pool of his own blood. The island used to have a lighthouse, and from 1909 through the 1920s, a handful of people lived there to run it. But a piece of folklore says that a small group of snakes made their way into the lighthouse keeper's home, killing him and his entire family. Contrary to popular belief, the large population of snakes grew naturally over hundreds of years with no human involvement. Some people even think that pirates intentionally introduced the snakes in an effort to secure treasure. Since Isla de Quimada Grande was cut off from Brazil 11,000 years ago by the rise in sea levels, the species of snake that lived there evolved differently from their relatives on the mainland. The Brazilian government closely regulates travel to Isla da Quimada Grande because of the dangers involved. The island isn't exactly at the top of tourist destination lists. Some claim the snake population is so dense that there's a snake in every square foot. If a person chooses to ignore the many warnings, they run a high risk of being bitten by a golden lancet. There's a 7% chance of dying if bitten, but if treated, the chances dwindle down to 3%. The horrific side effects include brain hemorrhaging, kidney failure, necrosis of muscular tissue, intestinal bleeding, and more. The Brazilian government insists a certified doctor is present on every authorized trip to the island. Island. The Navy does visit once a year to do maintenance on the lighthouse, which has been fully automated since the 1920s. Researchers and biologists who are given special permission to visit in order to study the golden lancets use it as an essential laboratory for understanding wildlife as well. Would you dare to visit Snake Island? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe while you're at it. 3. Poveglia Island the small Italian island of Poveglia is located in the South Lagoon, right between Venice and Lido. It served as a bastion, sanctuary, place of exile, and graveyard for the sick, elderly, and dying for countless years. The first people to settle here were men, women, and children who had fled brutal invaders in 421. Due to its tiny size, the island was easily defensible and not worth the hassle of invading. Despite being exempt from the laws and taxes of the mainland for centuries, this little community's population drastically dropped, and by the 14th century, the island grew to be abandoned once again. Poveglia became a quarantine colony in 1348 when the bubonic plague made its appearance in Venice. Citizens who showed symptoms of the disease were sent to the island to wait out their symptoms. One out of three Europeans died from the plague. 
Sadly, those sent to the island either passed there or showed up deceased. Those who were too weak were cremated, which was tens of thousands of people. The practices were carried out again when the Black Death swept through once more in 1630. Napoleon's military effort depended on the island's creepy stories and defended its position to safeguard supplies of gunpowder and munitions. In the late 1800s, Paveglia was home to a psychiatric hospital. Again, the island was utilized as a place of exile instead of recovery, and the institution had very poor conditions. People report that during the 1930s, doctors who worked there subjected inhabitants to strange experiments. One eventually lost their mind, climbed to the top of a bell tower, and jumped off. Despite the island's current desolation, people claim the bell's echo can still be heard. Despite the fact that the bell was removed many years ago, the facility underwent a transformation in the 20th century. It turned into a geriatric hospital, but it closed in 1975. To date, the entire island remains deserted. Residents and visitors are forbidden, and fishermen stay far away from the cursed site. Attempts to restore the former hospital structure were made in recent years, but it unexpectedly stopped without reason, leading residents to believe they were forced out by the island's evil spirits. 2. North Sentinel Island a short string of islands winds its way across the Bay of Bengal just northwest of Indonesia. The majority of these 572 landmarks, which are a part of the Indian archipelago, are accessible to tourists. Most of the islands are great places to enjoy the sun and relax, but one is fully off-limits and isolated from the rest of the world. It's called North Sentinel Island. And the people who live there, the Sentinelese, have been off the grid in complete seclusion for over 60,000 years. Since it's well known that Sentinelese tribes fiercely reject all contact, other islanders often steer clear. Entering their area would probably result in a fight, and if one does break out, there would be no way to settle it through diplomacy, since the Sentinelese do not know any other languages. Any form of translation is impossible, and they will not communicate. Being isolated from the world for thousands of years has led to very little information about the island's people. The number of individuals living there has been estimated by researchers to be anywhere from 50 to 500. North Sentinel Island's location is ideal for the Sentinelese, since it offers them the privacy and seclusion they cherish so much. It has no natural ports and is surrounded by thick, heavy forests and jagged coral reefs. Researchers are baffled as to how they've survived all these years. After entirely destroying the Bay of Bengal coastline, the 2004 tsunami and the years after had to have been outrageously difficult. Observers have only gotten a distant glimpse of their homes, which are made of bigger communal structures with divided family rooms and shelter-style huts made from palm leaves. As part of a British imperial strategy for uncontacted tribes, 20-year-old Morris Portman kidnapped an elderly couple and four children from Sentinel Island in 1880, marking one of the earliest documented attempts at contact. After taking them to to Britain, he tried to treat them well and observe their customs. Then he offered them presents and finally took them to his home. He'd just arrived in Port Blair, an island capital though, before the older couple became very ill. He returned them and the four children home, since he was worried the kids would get sick too. The Sentinelese people lived in solitude for another hundred years before the Indian government made another attempt to get in touch in 1967. Every time researchers sought to meet, the tribe refused to participate and retreated into the woods. The researchers ultimately decided to back out and leave gifts on the coast. Attempts to communicate by other parties, including National Geographic, a naval sailing ship, and the Indian government in 1974, 1981, 1990, 2004, and 2006 were met by a volley of arrows. Two mud grabbers visited in 2006, but they were unable to escape, prompting several attempts to recover their bodies. Since then, there's been only one shot at making contact. In 2018, John Allen Chow talked two fishermen into bringing him to North Sentinel Island. He was on a missionary mission and believed he could bring Christianity to the people. They only brought him so far, so he swam the rest of the way. Upon arrival, he was greeted with armed men, which prompted him to back off. Sadly, he made a second attempt later that cost him his life. The two fishermen came to pick him up the next day, but they were too late. John's body was never found, and the men were arrested for helping him on the dangerous and illegal journey. 
The benefits and dangers of missionary activity, as well as the protected status of North Sentinel Island, were the subjects of a worldwide discussion triggered by Chow's acts. Some said that although Chow intended to help the tribe, he instead put them at risk by exposing the fragile population to potentially dangerous viruses. Others applauded his bravery but expressed sadness over his failure to realize the slim chance of victory. Some were strictly against his mission, feeling that the tribe had the right to practice their own beliefs and culture without anyone bothering them. Most of the islands in the archipelago lost these rights after being invaded. The Sentinelese have lived in isolation for centuries, avoiding interaction with the outside world. Their seclusion is said to continue, maybe for another 60,000 years, whether they dread the modern world or simply want to be left alone. 1. North Brother Island One of the two deserted islands in the East River of New York City, between the Bronx and Rikers Island, is North Brother Island. This island, which covers over 20 acres (0.08 kilometers squared), had several hospitals and medical facilities for those who suffered from illnesses that required isolation. The desolate island became the home of the Riverside Hospital in 1885. The facility was first built to provide care for smallpox patients, but later expanded to serve more. It was the perfect site for separating the sick from the healthy, since only boats could get there. The TB Pavilion, which was built in 1943 to treat patients with tuberculosis, was one of the hospitals on the island. But it was shut down in 1945 when a vaccine became available. On North Brother Island, it is one of the structures still structurally sound. Mary Mallet, often called Typhoid Mary, was among its well-known residents. Mary, a young Irish immigrant, got a job as a chef in New York City. People got sick at all of her jobs before an inquiry into the epidemic, which turned out to be typhoid fever, was finally started. Mary was apprehended after being positively identified as the first healthy typhoid disease carrier. Despite having no symptoms herself, she'd unknowingly infected 53 people by the time she was taken to the hospital. She spent more than 20 years in quarantine dying in 1938 while living in a modest bungalow near the hospital. The General Slocum, a sidewheel steamer, caught on fire and sank not too far from North Brother Island on June 15, 1904. She was carrying 1,342 people, many of them St. Mark's Evangelical Lutheran Church members on their way to their annual church picnic. Rags and oil canisters in the lamp room caused the fire and it quickly spread. Safety equipment on the boat was in bad shape and was not functioning properly. While being used, the fire hoses broke down. Many passengers put on life jackets as they plummeted into the river, but most were rotten and unable to help the people who were quickly pulled down by bulky wool clothing. The people of North Brother Island noticed the flaming ship and called for help. The hospital's pumps were prepared to activate, but it was too late. Before the boat capsized on the beaches, over 1,000 individuals had died in the flames or drowned. During the national housing shortage after World War II, the island structures, notably the tuberculosis pavilion, were used to house war veterans, but by the 1950s they became abandoned. Later, North Brother Island was converted into a treatment facility for young drug users. The hospital provided the newest therapies, like education and rehabilitation, although there was debate regarding its effectiveness for treating heroin addictions. To make teenagers get clean, they were segregated and imprisoned in a small room. Many people believed they were being detained against their will. The island was abandoned when its doors were shut for good in 1963 and it's now recognized as a wildlife refuge. Thanks for watching. Do you think you'd visit any of these islands? Which one seemed the most dangerous to you? Let us know in the comments and subscribe for more videos.